What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Saturday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. This podcast being brought to you by omahasteaks.com slash juice. Go there. Get a subscription. When you do so, free burgers for life, 10% off your first order, and always with that 100% money back guarantee at omahasteaks.com slash juice. Okay, so deep breath. <laughs> I mean... The shed injury blew the night. I, I liked Houston in the first half. I still think they probably would have covered that too in the first half. They ended up being down by a point to Duke, but Duke won. So it was a one and two night last night. We get baseball right, both basketball bets wrong. We're now only 84 and 82. We're just a little bit over 50% for the season in college basketball. Kind of a bummer. And if we, then as we add in the future wagers, not great. So I know you're probably coming on here going like, what are we doing, Matt? All right. So Duke won. I'm really surprised at the opening number. It was seven. It's now five and a half and coming down. Let's wait. All right. Let's wait and see what we get here from a money line perspective. And we may need to bet it in game. All right. So again, we have seven units to play with. Okay. So the Marquette future is what we're working off of. All right. So that's one unit that we lost. Now we have another half unit. So we have one and a half units that are in play here, okay? So if Duke wins, we would lose one and a half units. The idea is to win three or four units on this, okay? Now, can we do that? Yes, but it depends upon what the number is going to be, right? So, you know, if we're playing off, let's just play with the total of $100 because that's just the easiest number to play off of. I'm not saying we should be betting, but play off of it, okay? So we have $100 to win 700 right? 255 is not great from a money line perspective, okay? In terms of what we have to to win to get to win $300, it can get pretty expensive. So th this is sort of like where we're looking at North Carolina, so like in order to win 200 it's $500 to win $200 basically on this. So we'd have to lay 700 out to win 275 or so, okay? We don't want to be laying out that type of dollars just to come on back because the first wager, okay, we would cut into it, right? So $700 is what we have to win if NC State wins, right? So the Duke situation has to be played with a little bit. The Duke bet very well might come in game, okay? So on the Discord channel, bettingpros.com slash juice. But let's see how much farther down the Duke number winds up going. And you might go, well, Matt, why don't you just lay five and a half with Duke? Well, what happens if Duke wins by three? <laughs> okay, then we have lost both bets. So that's going to be interesting. How we play off NC State, we're going to... And remember, NC State just beat Duke in the ACC tournament. So, like, they just played <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, and NC State won. So that's why that number, number being seven was really high. I've thought about, and I don't think I'm going to do this, but, like, I thought about teasing... Purdue and Duke, they're both playing at the same time. And I was like, well, what if we do something like, I don't know, like a five-point teaser? That would be 128. And you could tease Purdue. You'd cross zero with Purdue, but it wouldn't really matter. You're trying to get money line out of Purdue. Plus one, plus one and a half, and then Duke's down to a half a point. It's basically Duke down to a money line. But what happens if Tennessee beats Purdue? <laughs> I mean, so I don't know. I, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. I gotta think about it. I, I don't exactly know yet what I want to do and how I want to do it as of yet, but that might be a way of doing it where we can tease it. And, you know, if Duke wins and Tennessee wins, yes, we lose that, whatever hedge we come up with, maybe a two unit hedge we come up with on that, but it would keep the Tennessee future alive, which, you know, at 14 to one, we're playing off of that. So, I don't know yet, but most likely I'm just going to bet Purdue money line and then probably in game Duke and NC state. Okay. So the beauty of having, you know, where we are with, with Duke and, and, and Purdue is that obviously we, we've got Purdue sitting here at only minus minus one fifty six, which makes it way more easy to play off of just given where we are here with the numbers. It's just, it's way simpler for us to come in and bet money line on Purdue because we have, you know, 14 to one. If we want to go ahead and lay $400 coming back on this, it's, you know, it's to win 2.5 units. So we'd cut into our 14 to one, we cut into it, but 
I'm trying to not. We're down four units right now on the on the, on the wagers on the official uh, futures. Okay, we're still alive. We still have been playing it, but like this is just kind of an, an exercise. A bunch of you guys have shown me some really cool tickets that you've done. Some of you guys have Duke and NC State. One guy has. I think it's like NC State at fourteen to one and Duke at nine to one to win the South bracket. So he can just kick his heels up and he's good. He doesn't have to do anything. Watch the game. Doesn't matter who wins. He's coming out profitable. That's great. I didn't do that. I probably should have thought to have done that. That's a good play out of him to take both. I just took NC State. I didn't take both as a hedge off of the future for Marquette. But Tennessee wins. They advance. So we have that future available. NC State wins, advances. So we've got that future available. So again, Saturday's podcast Sunday's or Sunday Sunday morning's podcast, Saturday night's taping, Sunday morning's podcast. I will go all over everything we're going to do here for, for the mo for the mo for the mo, in the meantime. Right now, we're not doing anything. Okay, Tennessee future, NC State future. We're live in both games on Sunday. So what are we doing today? Nothing for Illinois UConn. I have no idea. I lean towards the over one fifty four and a half, but not betting it. I lean towards UConn, laying eight and a half. FanDuel has it at eight and a half. They kill everybody. Why, why wouldn't they kill Illinois? I don't know. I mean, eight and a half points is a lot of points. So I don't know what I'm doing with that. I want to get a better number. I'm going to in-game UConn. I want like five. Okay, I don't want eight and a half. I want five. I think UConn wins the game, but eight and a half might be too heavy. But I think UConn does end up winning and getting to the Final Four. It's why I didn't bet the Illinois side like we did with NC State because I don't think Illinois can beat UConn. Terrence Shannon's incredible. Just don't think there's enough firepower there across the board to handle what UConn's going to throw at them. And I think UConn and Purdue are on a crash course here for the national championship. So I think we're going to see 1v1. Tennessee lost by four in Maui, right, or in, in Hawaii against Purdue earlier this year. So that game is a little scary. That's why the number's only three and a half. NC State number's coming down. It was seven. Now it's five and a half. And let's see how far down it will go from a book, from a dog perspective. But I'm betting nothing on Illinois and UConn. What I am betting on is the under 164 and a half for Clemson and Alabama. I, this number's too high. I'm sorry. I know it's Alabama. I know the game against, against North Carolina went over 175. Against Grand Canyon, it went under by 40. It was 173, went under by 40. Every game in tournament play so far for Clemson has gone under. Boston College, New Mexico, Baylor, Arizona, all unders. I don't believe that Brownell is going to go up-tempo with Nate Oates. I just don't see it. Clemson's going to control tempo. I I think Clemson's going to win the game. I do. I I lean to Clemson. It's three. People like Alabama. Okay. Uh, I just think it's an under game. Clemson's an under team. It's going to be an under game. I think they're going to slow tempo down dramatically. I don't think we're going to see some high-flying, really aggressive game. And, And I just personally think that Clemson's the better team in crunch time. Their bigs are so good. I know Alabama just beat North Carolina. I understand that. And people are going to go, oh, you beat Alabama. You mean you beat North Carolina. People want to bet Alabama. I don't. I think people are still kind of sleeping on Clemson here. This is an 83-81 win for Alabama. So it's a three-point number, so you get a little benefit there. It's 164 total at Ken Palm, which doesn't give us a ton of issues. But Clemson is 257th in pace. 257th. I think Alabama's going to speed them up that much. They're ninth in tempo. I give you that. I mean, Bama wants to run. I Absolutely. And the Carolina game barely went over. Went over by a point, but it was a huge number of 170, what, five, right? 175. Went over by one. Alabama's had 175, 173, and 172 so far in the tournament. Two of the three games have gone over. One game went dramatically way under the 72-61 win over Grand Canyon. But every game, under by 4, under by 10, under by 20, under by 15 for Clemson, 153, 146, 153, 146, and now we're at 164 and a half? Okay. Under Clemson, Alabama for 1.1 units. All right? Baseball. Told you in the Discord channel, 
I don't really need to do too much of a breakdown here. The Rockies are awful. We are going to bet the Rockies, fade the Rockies on the road. We're going to fade them consistently. They lost 7-3 to to the Diamondbacks. This number is plus 102. Even money basically everywhere. Arizona Diamondbacks on the run line. Here's the thing. Sunday baseball is wonky. Okay? It's wonky. It's going to be wonky tomorrow. I don't want to bet baseball tomorrow. I want to bet baseball today. Okay? I want to bet baseball today. This is a night game in Arizona. Okay? D-backs are 2-0 on the run line so far. Austin Gomber, left-handed pitcher, is going for the Colorado Rockies. He was 9-9 with a 5.50 ERA last year. This is a guy who is somewhat of a reliever at times, kind of a spot starter, not someone that I would really like going, okay, look out for this guy. Uh, came out of the bullpen a little bit last year, but, I mean, pitching on the road, Against Tampa Bay and his start, and he, I guess he, well, they, they sent him down. He only pitched in the end of August, and they sent him down. He's a young kid. Oh, he's 30. No, he's not a young kid. He's 30 years old. He is not great on the road. He gave up six runs. He lost six to one of the Dodgers, six to five at Tampa Bay last year. I, I just think if you take a look at where this offense is right now and the bullpen for the Rockies after yesterday and the day before, run line. I, I just think we, we come back again here and bet it. Sunday, we'll take a break on it. Tommy Henry's going on the other side, 5-4, and four, the 4.15 ERA last year. He was pretty good, although he lost a ton of games late. He lost his last four starts, but he, he was decent, good enough for us to, I think, to go ahead and back this kid and say, okay, the offense will score enough runs. So far, so good for the Diamondbacks offense, scoring seven runs yesterday for them winning the game 7-3 to three, and then pounding the Rockies in the first game 16-1. to one. Run line, Diamondbacks, plus 102 for 1.1 units. I apologize if you're hearing the dog bark. He wants to come in the room. So sorry if you're driving and you're hearing a dog barking. That's my one of my two dogs that won't stop barking. Let's see if, you, if I can let him in and we'll stop barking. Hold on. Get in here. Come on. He'll stop barking now that I let him, let him in the room. Apologies. So now we go to the third bet of the day. And I'm going to do a little two-leg money line parlay, okay? I do not believe that the A's are going to be excited to play at home at all. A's on the run line, J.P. Sears is going, okay? It concerns me a little bit because J.P. Sears is a decent pitcher. BB is going for the Guardian. He was tremendous last year. But the number is 148 on the money line, and it's minus 137 to take the A's at plus one and a half runs. So I don't really want to lay this here on the run line. Concerns me a little bit, but I also don't want to lay minus 140, minus 150 juice here on the Guardians, who are 2-0 and on the run line, 2-0 and straight up. There, there was announced 3,500 fans in the game yesterday. On a Saturday, I don't think there's going to be anybody there. I mean, it's going to be absolutely empty in Oakland for this game coming up here today. It's a 1 o'clock day game start against the Guardians. We're going to go money line Guardians to improve to 3-0, and even with J.P. Sears pitching, who arguably is the best pitcher for the A's. Just money line Guardians. But we're going to pair it up with the Dodgers. Dodgers money line. Now, you could easily bet the Dodgers on the run line. It's minus 210 on the Dodgers. The one fear factor is Yamamoto is pitching. Okay? Didn't pitch well overseas when he was in South Korea in his first debut. Game was crazy high scoring, and he got tattooed. But this offense for the Dodgers is ridiculous. Okay? They've just scored a ton of runs. They lost 15 to 11 that game. If you remember, it's the only loss for the Dodgers in the year was that 15 to 11. They scored, still scored 11 runs in that game and lost. But 7-1, 6-3 so far. Mookie Betts has hit three home runs in two innings, sorry, in two games so far. Again, Saturday, I would lean towards the Cardinals here on Sunday just because it's hard to sweep a team and it's a little bit wonky. Just Sunday baseball is weird, as we know. So I want to jump in here with the money line on the Dodgers, money line on the 
Guardians. It's a plus 150 parlay for 1.1 units. A little two-leg money line parlay for us here on a Saturday because we don't bet baseball on Sunday. It's too scary, and we'll be heavily invested, obviously, in the college basketball on Sunday. So this is a good time to jump in here with that, okay? So two bets in baseball, one bet in college basketball. Again, I will be on the Discord channel, bettingpros.com slash chat. We will look to see when and if I'm going to jump in here on uh, on the UConn game against Illinois. I'll tell you if I find a number that I like. I hope that we find something in the four to five range personally. I'm not sure we'll be able to, but that's kind of the goal is to find it somewhere in that range, you know, to jump in there with, with that. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm excited to see how we roll out here with that game with Illinois and UConn. But for today, under 164 and a half, Bama and Clemson run line, Diamondbacks plus 102, Dodgers, Guardians, money line plus 150 parlay for one unit. So we've got one, 3.1 units going here today on a Saturday. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt each and every morning. Daily Juice Podcast, always being brought to you by OmahSteaks.com. <laughs> 